Hey, it's Lisa Ryan. Welcome to the Manufacturers Network podcast. I'm excited to introduce our guest today, Alex Kinderknecht. Alex is the president of U.S. operations at MRU Instruments. With a passion for innovation, Alex has played a pivotal role in enhancing gas analysis and emissions monitoring products, providing crucial solutions for industries ranging from steel to refineries. So, Alex, welcome to the show. Hey, Lisa. Thank you for having me. So share with us a little bit about your background and what led you to doing what you do with MRU Instruments. Yeah, so I'm with MRU now 15 years, more than 15 years. Started really young. I'm still young. (laughs) And I started like in the manufacturing. I was always interested in electronics, devices, and everything like with how things work. That was like my starting point. And then I worked in the manufacturing of MRU in Germany. I was building analyzers. I was uh, building infrared modules and different other things that led me to go more into detail, more deeper into that space. And then I, I took some classes, education over the course of a few years. And then I changed my role from manufacturing, building analyzers to going to the R&D department. So I was also part of making the product better, understanding what the customer needs and implementing that into the product. So my part was more like a validation process. So I had to look at how the customer looks at it and then understand what can we do better here. And I was working for uh, R&D for a while until an opportunity opened up here in the United States. So we have offices all over the world. We have one in the United States. And so an opportunity opened up so that I could go to the United States, help out. And so I was working here for a few years as a technical support and sales person and got really deep into field testing. So I was out with a lot of customers, understanding what they do, helping them out. And then a few later, a few years later, I took this business over here. Now I'm the president. I'm running the American office. And from here, we provide gas analyzers to Canada, America, Mexico. And we have for all different industries, we have a product and we develop it. And yeah, this is how I started. And that's where I am right now. <laughs> okay, great. So what do you find are some of the common mistakes made by those who are responsible for combustion and biogas processes? One one big mistake is that our customers think a lot of times that they buy a gas analyzer and then there is nothing to do anymore, anything to it. So a gas analyzer is like a a car where you need to do a regular maintenance. So a a, a gas analyzer needs maintenance. The sensors, there are sensors built in to measure different types of gases, uh, different industries, and they need calibration. They need uh, replacement over a time. So a lot of our customers, they do the mistake that they buy a gas analyzer and then they, they think that's it. So then they use it for as long as they can until it breaks or something happens. And then they come back and say, hey, this doesn't work. What's the issue? And then we find out, yeah, you have to do some maintenance on the unit as well. So that's something that a lot of customers or people who use gas analysis in the beginning, when they start with in, the, in that industry, they don't understand right away. But after a while, then they see, okay, yeah, if I want accurate readings, if I want a good um, analyzer, I need to take care of the unit. I need to calibrate the unit. I need to maintain the unit over over time. So this is what we see as a common mistake that happens. <laughs> so is that something that's using these instruments are new for them that they didn't they just started using these products that they wouldn't know that? Yeah. Or... A lot of times what happens and it's now uh, more frequent is um there is a regulation coming into place that says, for example, you need to monitor your emissions, for example. And then okay. a company that never had to deal with that because the regulation just came in, they now have to understand, okay, what do I have to do? How do I measure my emissions? 
and then they do some research and they found find us and then we give them all the information they need we give them the product and this is kind of like the first time they use the product and that's what we see that beginners they have this issue <laughs> Okay. And for what industries is this new information for? Where did the regulations change? Oh, they are changing everywhere right now and really fast. So it was a lot. So our start or yeah, how we started was always like combustion and emissions. So you can use our products on measuring car exhaust gas. So what comes out of your car, then we measure what comes out of, of a chimney of a um, power plant. We have like products for all different types of industries. And now that climate change and um, everything is changing so rapidly that there are so many regulations coming into place right now that says, hey, you mm. need to do something. You need to monitor, you have to report. A lot of customers now, it depends on what industry, they have to report. So they need, to, they need a product that they can measure the gases and then report to the EPA, for example. And yeah, so this, this is now a growing thing, uh, like with the regulation, it's growing, it's everywhere. And we see it like all over the United States and Canada and Mexico. Okay. So from a personal standpoint, it sounds like what I have to go through every couple of years in the state of Ohio with e-check. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. We have that in, in Germany, we have a regulation that even uh, says, so if you have a furnace at home, you need to get this furnace checked every year or a few times a year. It's like a, a regulation that says you have to call somebody so that they check on your furnace. So it's like something that's mandated and everybody has to go for it. And we see more and more here in the United States now as well. Yeah. Uh, new regulations, like you said, with everything always seeming to expand Right. So what are you seeing are some new advancements that are being developed to better serve those responsible for combustion and biogas processes? Yeah, so we what we are working on, we are always trying to innovate. We try to evolve and understand what the customer needs. We are working on some new features where we can do wireless data community transfer. So we have products that are like stationary on like big power plants, on biogas upgrade facilities, on landfills where they measure the gas. And uh, we are working on some um, features where we can uh, send data to the cloud and then we can analyze the data and help the customer to understand, is your product working as expected, high efficiency? We try to go a step further and i mentioned in the beginning that a lot of customers they don't know or people don't know that they have to do maintenance and service so what we're right. doing with this new feature is that we will look into the health of the unit and then we will say hey something is not right is everything okay with your process or did anything happen to the unit so that we can do some we can prevent some issues before they they come up so we're working on some cloud-based communication systems with the product and our lab so uh, that we can offer to the customer a more diagnostic feature. And uh, that's what we hear a lot of times customer would like to have that. Yeah. So is AI playing a role in that at all? Not yet. I think this will be because right now we have to look at the data manually. We have to go through, we program our own dashboard our own software okay. so we can program it so that it looks at certain points and gives us a report but ai will probably be playing a role because you can optimize so many things with ai and streamline information and get everything better together yeah okay so what are some of the specific features or advancements in gas analyzer technology that that set them apart in the industries they serve so what, what we have, there are a lot of competitors in the field and they all do similar things. So gas analysis, what we do different and what brings us apart is that we have a multi gas detection capabilities in, in one single unit. So a lot of times like a company makes like one product for one specific industry with just a few sensors, just a few gases to measure. So 
we can do with one product, we can serve five to six industries easily. So mm. we, we made the product so that you we can customize every single product that we sell is a customized product. So the customer is calling and saying, hey, I'm from this industry. I'm measuring this. I want to see these gases here. What can you do? And then we streamlined the product so that we can do more with less so that we can use more sensors, more technology in one single unit to serve many industries. Yeah. Okay. And I think about emissions and sustainability, but given the global focus on environmental sustainability, how can companies understand and mitigate the environmental impact of their combustion and biogas processes? It's, it's always a good thing to understand what's happening with the emissions, with the climate, with the with what the customer is doing or the people are doing in the field. So we what we offer is we offer the raw analysis that whatever wherever the gas comes from, we give you the numbers, we give you the data. And based on this, you can optimize your process. So at the end, our products they help a lot to make things more efficient to understand what's going on the plant what's going on on the side so an example right now is let's say you have a furnace at home and your furnace is producing heat so you care about that it produces heat in your house but you care also about the gas bill so your right. gas bill is affected by that so if somebody who's doing service on your furnace comes with one of our products and measures the emissions on the product on your furnace, they can say, hey, we burn too much gas. We don't have to burn that much gas. You can optimize your process from your furnace so that the, the heat is the same, but it runs more efficient. So that means mm -hmm. you have less emissions, you have less cost for gas because it runs on an efficient way and everybody's happy then it's good for the climate it's good for the emissions it's good for you because you don't pay so much in gas bill and yeah that's what this product then will serve for yeah so then you give them the raw data and then how yeah. do they know what to do with it like how do they fix the problem that you've pointed out to them yeah so it, it depends most of our customers, they know what they need to do. There are a few new customers that come into the field and say, oh, I don't know what I need. Tell me what I have to do. And we give them some information. But most, I would say most of our customers, they know like what they need to do. Like they take our unit, they see the data, and then they know, oh, you know what? I have to optimize here. And then the data will change. And then based on what the data shows on the product, they say, yeah, that was a good adjustment, for example. And the same like in the biogas industry, if they want to run the process efficient, they know, okay, I have to tweak something here. So it's like a helping tool to tune the efficiency, the operation. So most, I would, most of our customers, I would say they know what they need to do. They just need the data. Yeah. Kanisha, do you have any examples that you can share of the before and after working with a client, you know, what you were able to find and what they were able to do or save as a result? Yeah, yeah. For example, let's look at the biogas industry. We have a customer, it's a landfill operation. They have to, from the regula regulatory standpoint, they have to burn the gas that is, that too much gas is coming out of the landfill. If they cannot use the gas for some reason, they have to burn it. So they, they have a flare on the landfill side and then they burn the gas, but it's also not allowed just to burn everything. So they have to burn a certain amount of, of gas. The values have to be right. So what we do, we install one of our products and then they measure the raw gas that comes out of the landfill and they see, oh, the numbers are way too high. We cannot burn this based on the regulatory standpoint. The numbers have to go down. So then what they do is they run the gas through some filtration. So like it's like filtration tanks with some medium inside. So they run the gas through it. They filter it. They optimize. They make the gas better that it fits for the, the flare to burn. 
And then they run the gas that's treated back into our unit. We measure it again and we say, you know what, now the gas looks good. So now you can burn the gas. That's one example that's based on the EPA that gives uh, uh, regulatory standpoints or um, forms out. Uh, but for example, also on your furnace, if we look at the furnace example, the furnace service person measures the with our unit, the exhaust of your furnace, and then they see, okay, the oxygen content is maybe too high or too low. So based on this, they regulate something on the furnace, and then they keep the oxygen level at the right point so that the flame, the heat that is produced is as efficient as possible. So they look at then the emissions so that they don't burn too much gas, they don't burn the wrong gas. So that's how it works. So it's like before you measure it, the raw values, and then you do some tweaking adjustments, and then you check the gas again, and then you say, okay, now that's good. Now I can work with that. Going back to the landfill, because I know here in Cleveland, there was one that they, this is years ago, they put a shopping center on a landfill and they didn't do the gas correctly on mm -hmm. it and it all failed. Yeah. When they're putting those tubes in there to collect the gas do they just burn the gas or is there another use that gas that they can use that gas that's coming out of the landfill so there are a lot of ways they can use the gas so the easiest way is burning it okay because they're not allowed to just release it into the air because it depends on what right. that is it's toxic as well so they have to burn it Another point is they can run a digester. I don't know if you're familiar with that. So it's, it's like a big pot where you okay. put some manure in and you can run like, it's like bacteria that they grow. And so they can create some like a RNG gas. So it's like a renewable natural gas. And they can make this gas so that it can be used for pipeline gas, like 100% methane. They can in, inject it into pipelines. They can make biofuel with it. So there are cars in the field that have a biofuel engine, like a hybrid engine. And so that you can make the gas from a landfill gas. So it, you hmm. can take the raw gas and change a lot of things with it and optimize the gas, filter the gas, burn the gas. And you can use it for so many different applications, ways here that it's great. We have, for example, a customer, he is doing um, hydrogen. So what he does is he uses landfill gas and they have a certain process where they separate the molecules from the methane molecules. And then at the end, they create 100% hydrogen. So what their goal yeah. is to put a hydrogen fuel station on, on every landfill in America. So then you can drive with your car if you have a hydrogen car. You can drive there and just fill up your car with it. So there are a lot of ways to, to use the gas. And it's at the wow. end also, it has to make sense from the financial standpoint because there are regulatory things that have to, there are in place to, that this works out. Yeah. Well, and I think that it's just so interesting because when you look at, again, the sustainability and protecting the planet and everything. So you're preventing things from going up in the air, from going up in the air, toxic gases and stuff. But when it comes to the landfills, to be able to reuse those resources that are just going to waste anyway, it's a yeah. pretty fascinating field, it sounds like. Right. And we are working in so many different fields where we work with like new startups that create new ideas and it's, it's interesting. It's so interesting what's coming out. And like I said, one of the topics here was the hydrogen fuel stations. That was something yeah. that was really cool that uh, they use land for gas and make hydrogen fuel stations out of it. That's cool. That's a great thing. Yeah, that is fascinating. So what do you wish that I asked you or that we didn't cover that you feel is important for our audience to know? about these uh, biogas and combustion processes? Yeah, so one thing that uh, we see a lot is that customers or uh, whoever is using the gas analyzers, they, they have to understand that this product is bringing a lot of value to the product. And one big thing that I always say is 
service is super important. It's really important. And we want always to highlight that we have a great service. We try to be in front of this and we work close with R&D department to make sure we understand our R&D department is like always ready to optimize everything. So they are working constantly to make the product better. And yeah, I wish like more customers would understand that, that the, that service is a big thing. And because we measure like all different industries, we measure all, everything in, in, in steel, biogas, landfill, wherever you want, we, we have a product. But we are also really strong in customer support. So our biggest goal is then understanding what's going on, giving the customer the power that they need to optimize the process that we're here to help them. And yeah, that's what, that's like the, always the topic that I talk about, <laughs> service and okay. optimization. Yeah. And if somebody did want to connect with you and find out more either about your processes or just find out more about you know, what they need to do for their organization, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Everybody can look me up on LinkedIn and get in contact with me. But the best way really is going to our website, mru-instruments.com. And then I usually look at all the customer feedback that is coming from there because it's important for me that everybody serves well and I'm like in this process to make sure that everybody is served and happy and so if they want if anybody want to reach out LinkedIn or through the website there's like a contact portal and I will be always looking to that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well Alex, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Yes, thank you for having me. It was great. I'm Lisa Ryan, and this is the Manufacturers Network Podcast. We'll see you next time.